Hi, good afternoon. I am Palm Praise 2, and I like to welcome you. Peace and blessings be upon you and your family this afternoon. Now, we are going to go ahead and get into the Goddess Black Woman. We are in character reflection number five. This is take four of character reflection number five. And the title of this section is, What is Emotion? Hmm. I'm not going to hold you too long. Let us go ahead and get into this take that I have for you. Without further ado, it reads as such. Emotion. Look at the word. Emotion. Let's break that down into its inner components for a better understanding. Emotion equals emotion equals energy minus motion equals energy in motion equals emotion. Hmm. Think about it. Your emotion is a reservoir of purely intense, convulsive energy stored within you, which can be stimulated by any number of factors, internally or externally. This energy of emotion can manifest in many different levels or volumes of intensity. Plus, it has many different outward expressions and forms depending upon the particular stimulus that is stimulating it. Emotion is a source and manifestation of energy and motion. It is the fuel. It is the power. It is that which gives mobility. Emotion is the fueling energy that empowers and moves the intellect. Intellect is that focused intelligence that guides and directs the power of emotion. Every organism or organized creation has an energy and an intellect. The energy and the intellect must be separated, distinguished, organized, and prioritized in their complementary relation to one another. Look at the sperm cell of life. This organism has energy and intellect. It has a tail and a head. The tail is a source of energized mobility. The head is the source of its directed intelligent intellect, excuse me. The tail helps the head meet its destination and the head helps the tail meet its destination. This is teaching us something. The head cannot get where it needs to go without the mobilizing energy of the tail. And the tail cannot get where it needs to go without the direct leadership of the head. There are no good without each other. An undirected tail is bound to crash, while an unmoved head is powerless, uh, purposeless, and non-potent potent, excuse me. It is like a thought with no action, unrealized and unverified, as if there was never any thought at all. This is teaching us something. The importance of both the head and the tail are equally important for the purpose of creation or life in a horizontal balance. But in order to fulfill this purpose of creation or life, one must submit to the other in a vertically prioritized order to properly function. This is teaching us something. Just come on, follow this. The tail must be smart enough to get behind the head and push, while the head must be smart enough to get in front of the tail and lead. That is the complementary relationship that functions on purpose and toward 
objective. This is teaching us something. They both must submit to the nature and the purpose of their creation. Let's total chaos is all that they achieve. Lest total chaos is all they achieve. And it is this achievement of chaos that we know all too well. As our tail is leading our head and our head is following our tail. The emotions and the intellect are equally important to the purpose of creation. And they can only fulfill the purpose when they are put in their proper and natural place. Take your personal intellect and mount it on top of your personal emotional energy. Your emotional character may currently be like a bucking, untamed, wild horse full of energy. But with no planned, rationally, intellect, direction to travel. So it will take the persistence and the skill of your intelligent character to train, tame, rein, saddle, and harness that powerful creation. You must be a skilled rider, guider, and driver. Lest that powerful energy and motion will buck you right off of it to fall on your butt again. And I know that we are all tired of falling on our butts throughout this life. But once you master the skills of a guiding intellect, that energy and motion will submit to you. Your emotional character will organize, prioritize, and submit to your intellect, intelligent character. No longer will your emotions and intellect be at odds with one another. They will be as one mind and one will. Perfect complements. Perfect balance. Perfect reciprocity. I don't know if I said that correctly. I'm going to spell it, y'all. R-E-C-I-P-R-O-C-I-T-Y. Perfect movement and perfect peace. And once this matrimonial unity is formed within you, you'll become a fluidly functional human being. There will be no thing that cannot accomplish together. There will be no thing that you cannot accomplish together. There will be no creation that cannot create together. There will be no destination that cannot travel together. There will be no goal that you cannot meet together. You will then have the power and ability to will or will. That's W-H-E-E-L. We had two spellings of will. The first one, W-I-L-L. You will then have the power and ability to will. W-I-L-L. In parentheses, R, will, W-H-E-E-L. Your thoughts into action and your ideas into reality. The creator gives a goddess the power to create. Also, once she exhibits the discipline ability to intelligently control that which is already created in order for you to be given the freedom to create the life that you want for yourself you must exhibit the responsibly intelligent discipline or emotional self-control freedom is gained through disciplined maturity discipline is no energy is no enemy. Excuse me. You need energy for the discipline. Yeah, you do. Since I said a miss word. But let's get back to the sentence here at hand. Discipline is no energy. Hmm. Did it again, y'all. Discipline is no enemy to freedom. It is the means to that freedom. If there would be any life situation whatsoever that would potentially provoke you to react purely emotional, just ask yourself, what would God do in this situation? And you will thereby know exactly what a goddess should do. 
your God does experience very strong emotions, but is not driven nor led by them. God leads them instead. A goddess does the same. Don't let your blind emotions recklessly drive you to do something lest they drive you right off the cliff. Distinguish, harmonize, and prioritize the two characters in your one being. Place the energetic mobility of your emotions under the guiding control of your intellect. And peace will be achieved. Peace will be achieved. The final affirmation. Whosoever controls your emotions is thereby in control of you. Yet, if you control your own emotions, you will thereby have self-control. That does complete take number four of character reflection. Number five, emotional thinking. We have completed uh, character reflection number five. I would like for you to stay tuned for character reflection number six, which is posture of pride. Hmm. Yes, we're going to go into that chapter, this next take here. But until then, I certainly want for you to be well, to take care, to be blessed, be safe, and it be at thy will. I will talk with you soon. I am signing out. It is I, poem praise too. Till next time. Later, y'all.